Hello guys, welcome to Expertizer Academy. So today we're gonna to get into a uh, couple of more uh, lessons on to Civil 3D. And sorry for being uh, there was a gap a uh, couple of months I guess. Uh, just got pretty busy with my other projects and stuff. So uh, let's keep be doing these ones hereafter. Um, okay, so let's get into today's one. So what I'm gonna do is uh, in the last lesson we have seen how to create a profile and a design profile and fix the depth. And that's all the stuff that we have seen in the last lesson. So we would continue from there and then uh, we would probably get into sections and do a bit more stuff. All right. So let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a quick uh, alignment. So I'm going to use a polyline command to create a polyline and then uh, create alignment from object. Select the polyline. Check the direction if it's OK. If you want to reverse it, you can reverse it. Press enter. And you can give it a name. So let's say this one is M1 road alignment. And it can be a center line or different types of alignment that you want to have. Uh, we're not going to focus on design criteria at this point. And then uh, we can keep the site to none, not a problem. The alignment style, we can leave it a, uh, to the ANZ default one. The label style, 10 meter interval Chinese and TP points, it's OK. And curve. Uh, the default radius, I'm going to put it as 20, so it's going to be a smaller curve. And erase the original entity, which will erase the uh, polyline. So I'm just going to click on OK. And that's uh, the alignment that we have, the zero changes starting from here. And then uh, that's when it, that's where it grows. And uh, so the blue color ones are the straights, and the curved ones uh, are going to be in red. And this is all in the alignment style, which you can go and change it if you want. All right. So next one, I'm going to create a profile. So I'm going to click on profile. Uh, profile, create surface profile. And I'm going to choose this alignment. If in case, if you're not able to see the alignment or if you're not sure, you can click on this button and go and pick the alignment on the screen. And then uh, you can pick the surface. It can be multiple surface here as well. So you can use this button to go and pick the surface that you want. Click on add. And then uh, your changes, where you want to start and where you want to end. So if you want to select a particular change to start and particular change to end, you can select that. And um, so once it's all OK, you can click on OK. That would actually create the profile, but not the profile view. Remember, the profile and profile view are two different things. So if I click on OK, it will create the profile, not the view. So the view is basically the graph. So if I click on this button here, it would pretty much close this button, same as uh, clicking on OK. And then it will fire the next dialog box where I can actually go and create the profile view. So I'm going to click on draw and profile view and same thing alignment and a lot of these things we have seen in the previous video guys. So that's why I'm rushing through on these items. Click on next and I'm going to leave this as such. Um, so this is basically the starting change and ending change for your graph. And then this is your profile view height. And uh, this is based on on this path wherever this alignment is traveling, whatever the surface depth and uh, what are the highest and lowest point of your surface is what we have here and then uh, click on next and um, so that's basically the profile display options and then the band set are you going to create it for road or pipe network what are you going to use it for so based on it you can pick one band set or you can even create your own band set and uh, once you're happy with that you want to put the band set in the bottom or on the top and then you can check what all the the data power uh, the bands that you want to have in your um, in your in a, in your view in your profile view and once it's all good click on next uh, hatch if you don't want to have a hatch you can do you can leave it but generally if you have hatches generally it, it actually takes a bit of a ram whenever you adjust your alignment it takes a while so click on profile view creation and uh, generally place your profile view to the top right corner to your model because it generally goes this way and this way so clicking on here so there we go so there we got your uh, profile i'm going to quickly create a design profile as well so to create that you can select the profile view remember this is the profile and this is the profile view so and also there will be uh, some labels that might be there as well which might also look the same so just going to click on the grid lines and then you get the ribbon on the top and then I'm going to click on profile creation tools and it automatically states that I'm going to create a design profile. If you want to give a different name, you can obviously and you can change the style. Click on OK. 
and this tool is similar to how you create alignment so I'm gonna use draw tangent with curves and make sure that you go to your starting point and zoom in closer because sometimes there might be multiple lines close to each other so you may not be actually clicking on the zero point if that is the case when you create a corridor your corridor will come right until this point and then it goes to the zero elevation so make sure that you go zoom in closer and then click on the starting point and then you can start drawing your design profile same way when you're finishing it just zoom in deeper and then click on that so that's done so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to fix the bands which you also seen how to do it in the previous lesson so i'm just going to quickly run through that uh, select it go to the profile view properties go to bands and then you're saying that the design is p1 and the natural surface is p2 the depth is p1 minus p2 so now i'm going to p1 which is here and you can see both of them are natural surface i'm going to change this to design okay so that's done and we got the depth and the profile view is all set so the next thing that we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to start creating our uh, corridor. So for that, we're going to get into sub-assembly. So for, before we get into that, what I generally do is I want to keep these things in a sort of like a little box here. The reason being is some of these objects are very tiny. And uh, if I lose it, generally we have to snoop around or go to the uh, toolbox to find them. Uh, just, just to avoid that uh, scenario. So I'm just going to create a box here to do it. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on assembly and then create assembly. And uh, yeah, I'm going to say it as M1 assembly and then click OK and then just put it in the middle. So as you can see, it's a tiny object. And then uh, once it's done, next what we're going to do is we're going to create sub assemblies. This is an assembly. So I'm, this is a center point and uh, we need to create the lanes and shoulders and everything. For that, we're going to go into the tool palette. The keyboard shortcut is control three. Uh, so that would take you to the tool palette or you can even go to the uh, view and then uh, there should be a tool palette here or you can go to home and then you can click on tool palette here which will all bring the tool palette all right just in case if you don't have the civil tool palettes up here just right click here and then you can enable whichever you want to enable all right so now under the quick reference i'm going to use the multi-purpose lane so click on this one and then check all the parameters here if you want to change something you can change it such as uh, width or uh, if you want to have the super elevation um, on the, uh, this is U super, is it on the left inner lane, outer lane, and all these kind of stuff, you can set it up. And then the base depth, all the different layers of the lane, you can also uh, set it up. And the width, so if you want to change to, let's say 2.8, whatever width you want to change it, you can change it as well. And then click on the green line. So make sure that you, every time you place your sub-assemblies, click on the right objects. So you're not actually making any uh, errors in there. And then if you want to place it on other side, so now you see there is right here. I'm going to change to left, come back and click on the green line. So you got that corridor on both sides. The lane is on both sides. Uh, so next one is I'm going to click on urban curb cutter gentle. And the same way, so side is left. So zoom in closer and click on the top circle and make sure it is in flange with the lane and then go to the other side, switch the side and then click on the circle. And then uh, we got the curb gutter. And then next one is I'm gonna use a simple lane. So if this is on the right side. So I'm gonna click on this one and then I'm gonna switch to left. I'm gonna click on this one. And um, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a footpath in here, urban sidewalk. And uh, so this one, I'm gonna put it on to left side. And then uh, I'm going to switch to the other side. I can do that as well. So another easy way to do these things is um, so you can also if it's going to be a complete symmetry. Uh, so what you can do is um, so you can select whatever you have done on one side and then you can right click and there is an option that says mirror. And this is not like AutoCAD mirror where you click on a mirror line. So this one is going to be the point where it's going to mirror on the other side. And there we go. So we got that. Uh, the next one is we got a daylight general so click on that so it's going to be on the left side and then uh, switch the side 
Okay, so that's done. So that's your corridor. So you can even go into each of those subassemblies and you can change things. And remember, there is a separate playlist for subassembly composers. If you want to create your own custom subassemblies, uh, check those lessons and it's going to be really useful. All right, so now that is all done. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a corridor along this path. So for that, I'm going to click on corridor and then uh, I'm going to give it the name as M1 corridor. And uh, so I'm going to use the alignment and profile combination or I can use a feature line. So I'm going to use an alignment and profile and this is going to be my alignment. This is going to be my profile. Remember, there is going to be an existing ground surface profile as well. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use the design profile and then the assembly. So if you're not sure which one is your assembly, because sometimes there will be plenty of them. So click on this one and then zoom in closer and uh, then click on the green line remember that's your assembly this is not your assembly all these ones are sub assemblies so this is your assembly so click on that and then uh, once it's all set make sure that you choose your target surface if you are adding daylights remember uh, these these two lines which is going on the left side that's your uh, uh, gradients so that's basically the batters uh, so that will go and meet the ground so for that you need to specify your target surface and once it's all done click OK and um, so that is OK just ask you to rebuild it and this is all the things that we have set it so starting chain age ending chain age your assembly uh, your alignment your profile and everything so you're set your all targets if you can click on it it shows that you have set your target for your left side batters and the right side batters your daylights pretty much and it's targeting to the natural surface if you want to do widening uh, you can also specify an alignment or um, or a polyline something for your uh, widening as well so that is all done so click OK and rebuild the corridor and then uh, here is your corridor so now select this one right click object viewer and the very first thing that you need to check is just make sure that you go to your side view and check there is no um, <clears throat> waterfall effect so now that is all done so that's pretty much your uh, uh, sub assembly so now um, and your corridor so next thing uh, what we do is in the next lessons is see how to customize this corridor to make and uh, look different and uh, if you want to have some specific random material on top of it and what you want to do whatever we can do that and also create a top surface and and datum surface and extract the quantities and a lot of those things we're going to see it in the upcoming lessons all right guys thank you so much and um and thanks for all the motivation and the messages and um yeah just share the channel we are pretty small now so every motivation we get you know we're going to do more all right guys thank you so much and there is an actually an app that we launched in uh, android store which is expertizer academy so you can go there and you can download that app as well all right guys have a good day cheers bye